So, Anna, we've seen today the final budget notice for allocation round six of the contracts for difference. So the big renewable energy auction, which is going to finalise its results in the next month. What's been announced? So it's really exciting. Um, we really have been hoping for a big announcement in terms of the final budget for AO6. It's a really important round. It's a new government. It's such a great opportunity to make sure that uh, the new government provides both confidence in the industry and really unlocks as much renewable capacity as possible. In terms of what's been announced, it's a really large budget, so I'm pretty delighted by that. Uh, 1.5 billion pounds uh, announced across all renewable technologies for the next, next convert to difference round. 1.1 billion of that will go to fixed positive offshore wind, yeah. uh, which is actually more than we've seen in budgets, previous allocation rounds combined. Um, it actually makes sense because if you think about it, we had no capacity coming through at the previous round. Yeah, so catching up. it's catching up effectively and also bringing uh, on new capacity. Mm -hmm. um, there's also an ambitious budget for emerging technologies. So tidal flowing wind, uh, the budget for that is now 270 billion. And for established technologies like onshore wind and solar, we have a budget of uh, 185 million. So yeah, really exciting, big uplift and uh, really good news for the industry. Sounds it. Um, we saw the Chancellor gave a big speech on Monday this week, um, describing the state of public finances and being worse than expected. What does this big number mean for the government's finances? It's actually interesting because contracts for difference don't function as a traditional subsidy. It's not just money going from government to industry and traditional sales. Uh, actually, a ton of, uh, a ton of high energy prices generators pay back to government uh, under contracts for difference scheme. So actually the energy crisis, it was uh, pretty good because you have some money going from generators to government, making up for the difference between the strike price and wholesale price to electricity. So uh, we're likely to be seeing some of that uh, as well over the next few years, depending on which way um, energy prices go. And actually it's worth saying that the budget is just an accounting tool, right? It's not necessarily that all that money will be paid one way or another. Uh, it's just a backstop for consumers and uh, a device for government to ensure that they don't all pay uh, so actually, in previous allocation rounds, we've hardly ever see the budget being used uh, with itself, and I think it's probably going to be the same now. And of course, it also is underwritten by the electricity consumer, and what this allows is to bring forward renewable capacity, which helps lower bills. Exactly. So even though people look at that number, it should understand that it's a way, that's a tool to bring down bills further. So what does this mean for capacity? How many new wind farms are we likely to see as a result of this? Yeah, so it's a, it's a really big uplift. Um, I think it's unlikely that we'll see the whole pipeline being cleared. Um, this is because of a couple of reasons. One was already mentioned last year's auction, where we have no new offshore uh, wind capacity coming through. So because we still have that backlog, the last new capacity that's coming in the meantime, it's unlikely that the, the more than 10 gigawatts that are available just for offshore wind will clear. But I think that we'll still make pretty good progress towards clearing some of that capacity. And I think in, also in terms of the emerging technologies, we need to see some more of those projects coming online because we need to see costs coming down. Uh, we need to see economies of scale being reached. And again, it's, it's going to make some some ways for us. Um, I think if we have an offshore wind, depending on which way the strike prices go, um, we could see capacity between 4.5, 6.7 gigawatts being mm -hmm. cleared. So not quite 10 gigawatts, but yeah, a, a decent amount of the, of the pipeline. Yeah. And just to give you a sense, six gigawatts if we're going m midway through that range is enough to power about four million homes. So again, pretty significant for the consumer too. And a big injection into economic growth. I mean, that's the six gigawatts of, you know, really talking about best part of 20 billion pounds just in offshore wind fixed bottom of load. And, and, and there are good news, good news of this option for floating wind and also in context of you know, the lifting of the onshore wind barrel, like that won't directly affect it, big increases for onshore, you know, onshore wind pipeline as well. Yeah, exactly. And actually, I wanted to ask you because you're on the onshore wind task force, uh, which is kicking off formally today. Yeah. Um, what does this announcement mean for, for onshore wind for the priorities in task force and for industry? Well, first and foremost, you know, the, the, the announcements um, of lifting the barrel on onshore wind in England is really positive, but also the creation of the task force, something we asked for. So it's great that it's starting today, I'm looking forward to it. It's really about catalyzing the industry because we shouldn't be under any illusion. You can't just sort of go from zero to delivering, you know, overnight. So we need to, to reestablish the best confidence in onshore wind in England. And there are a number of challenges to overcome with that, notably, you know, building public support, making sure we have the grid available to do it, 
making sure that the planning laws are adapted to take account of what's happened in the last nine years. Turbines are bigger, different, more powerful. Um, and you've got all of that dynamics, like, you know, we've got probably wind farms out there in the next few years, which will need to go through repowering the change in the turbines or extending the life of them. So, so some of those things are going to be coming through the system and we need to work cohesively between industry and government to, to tackle those challenges in a systemic way. Much like we have done in offshore wind over many years with the Offshore Wind Industry Council, we now need to sort of evolve into this delivery mindset between industry and policymakers to make it happen. So that's the job at hand on offshore wind. That's great. And um, I think in addition to that, we also have a range of other tools and institutions that have been announced by government to support onshore wind but other technologies as well. I just wanted to get your take on Chile Energy, one of the most recent announcements that we've seen in the last few days. And also we know that government is planning an industrial strategy. Uh, what do you make of that in the context of allocation round six? Allocation round six is important because it's about continuity of the industry, what actually industry wants. Um, in, and this is true for supply chain and it's true for the developers as well. This continuity and consistency of delivery. So big feast of famines are not good. You know, we want cons- you know, constant delivery and that's important for the government's mission driven approach to clean energy. So that's good news. We got, you know, we should see the market in in a, in a healthier state this year than it was last year, and that should, we, you know, the message to government is that's got to continue. Um, GB Energy, you know, could potentially play a role. I mean, this is a state-owned uh, energy company. Well, I think there's a role it can play in development. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a role in particularly where development could be to see it to, to uh, be riskier or more challenging, um, and you know, so. Taking the case of onshore wind in England, one of the things our report, which we published um, just before the election, but it's uh, you know it's, it's available for people to see. You know, one of the things our report on GBN highlights is that you know, public support mm-hmm. for projects actually goes up if they see that there is a state-owned institution like GB Energy, which will give a wider benefit to society. So, so there's a role there for it to play. GB Energy, obviously, in its infancy, um, it's appointed the chair going to see more details to come over the coming years. Also a big role for the Crown Estate Partnership, which was announced. Um, so all of these things are going to be very exciting to watch over and obviously to shape for us over the coming um, year or so. So it's going to be a very exciting time. Great. I think we're, we're going to wait to see a few more details on how those institutions fit together and how they support the delivery of the industrial strategy. But yeah, I think it's fair to say we at Optimus will be at the forefront of ensuring that delivery is for the industry. Absolutely.